My name is Jonathan Statham. I'm a, a cattle veterinary surgeon in practice in, in Bishopton Vets in Ripon in North Yorkshire. And uh, I work very closely with one of my dairy clients, John Banks of Wilden Grange Farm. And we're very committed in working in partnership to control all aspects of herd health and welfare on John's farm of Holstein cows. And one of the main aspects of that is control of infectious disease. And we've prioritised BVD as one of the key infectious disease issues to control in his herd. My name is John Banks. I have a 280 cow dairy herd on the northern edge of the Vale of York, a farm with my brother here. We've been here for quite a few years now and we are implementing various infectious disease controls including BVD with the Bishopton Veterinary Group. The first step in control of BVD is the planning stage and it's really important right from the onset that farmers and vets work together to establish really what the aspirations are for control of BVD. That's going to be quite different with different types of herd. So whether a pedigree herd is selling breeding replacements with very high value animals, they may have a, a different set of priorities to a more commercial herd. But the fact remains that in all herds, BVD is a really important priority for control. But we need to work out exactly what the main method is for doing that on each individual farm. So it's critical that at that planning stage it is about consulting the herd vet and working closely together to find out for that specific farm how we can maximise health and welfare performance with control of BVD. So the first stage in control of BVD is the planning stage and it's really important right from the outset that vets and farmers work together to actually establish what the best approach is for a particular farm. The second important part of BVD control is actually measuring the herd health status. It's really important to understand whether we've got a herd that is actively experiencing BVD problems or a herd that's actually free of BVD. And if we don't measure the status of that farm, it's very difficult to take the next steps forward in BVD control. Our yearling young stock or that sort of age, we would collect blood samples, pool those blood samples and test those and that would let us know if there was a PI, a persistent infector. If within that 10 sample we found one, then we'd isolate it and then we'd cull it. So that would be get rid of that problem. We were routinely serving heifers that hadn't been vaccinated. The heifers as youngsters, if they were under six months old, they weren't being vaccinated because they still had some immunity from their mothers. But as time went by, if they got to 14 months old, we would probably serve them and they might not have had their primary cause. And that's an absolute disaster for causing PIs. I mean, it's almost guaranteed you'll get a PI if you've got any BVD in your herd with that system. The third step in control of BVD is actually the first part of managing the disease. Because if we've established what herd status is, then if we're a herd that's free of BVD, the critical steps are staying free. We need to make sure that we keep BVD outside the farm gate and we don't let BVD become a problem on a farm. So for example, we need to make sure that we secure farm boundaries, make sure that fencing is in good condition and that we don't have unknown health status animals straying in. Beyond that, it becomes really important that we manage and control purchase of stock. One of the highest risks for herds that are free of BVD is buying animals of unknown BVD status. So it's very important that we understand the health status of any animals that we need to bring into the herd. So the full step in control of BVD is actually the other part of management. And this is very relevant for herds that actually have got a health status where BVD is a current problem in the herd. And the number one priority for these herds is finding persistently infected BVD animals and culling them out of the herd. This really is the main factor that affects control of BVD with ongoing infected herds. We have to find PIs and remove them from the herd if we're going to get good control of BVD. We now give our primary dos doses at two times during the year. So we'll do a January session of primary doses and we'll do an August session of primary doses. That way nothing can get to 14, 15 months old without having had a primary dose. And therefore it's not going to get served before it's had its primary dose. 
The final part of our control measures, which we started doing about 18 months ago, is tissue sampling with the tags on the calves. So for our 80 or 100 dairy replacement calves we get every year, when we put the ear tag in, it punches a lump of tissue out which gets sent off to the lab and they then test that to see if that calf is going to be a PI. And that's really, that is absolute belt and braces. We've done everything else right. We're fairly confident with the other things we're doing, but as an absolute last chance to spot these PIs, which we don't want, we use the tissue sampling tags and we're very happy with that. It's not a big cost. We really like it. So the fifth step in control of BVD is actually having done all the hard work to do the planning work and establishing what the health state of the herd is and then both keeping BVD out or removing persistently infected animals, we have to make sure that we don't actually leave the job there. And it's important that then we monitor what the ongoing health status of the herd is so that we can spot the early signs of BVD reappearing and to make sure that we've got a confidence that the herd remains BVD free and we can maximise the health, welfare and profitability of the herd for the future. The reason we're doing all these control measures, in particular the BVD measures, is fairly simple. It's money. We feel the more we get on top of the BVD, the more money the farm will make itself. Our heifer replacement calves, 80 to 100, we are a closed herd, so they're very, very valuable to us. We want to get those growing as quickly as possible into our herd, hopefully increase our numbers a little bit. They'll be giving milk into the tank. If they give more milk, it's more money. If it's more money, it's very simple. It's what we need to run our farm. So that's what we're looking for.